Hey man, what's up? We're just completing the electrical work right now. Do you know of any resources that could help me out with this inspection? Wait, hold on a second. Building code buddy online. Nice. New Year 2022. What a great time to get started on this first of four rough trades inspections. So if you're new to the channel, follow me. And a special shout out to the channel subscribers. I thank you for your interest, support, and for being a part of this journey. This video will present a basic rough electrical inspection in a new single family dwelling. The electrical cable shown in this video will be non-metallic sheathed cable which is the most widely used wiring method in residential construction. Non-metallic sheathed cable wiring shall comply with the provisions of Articles 300 and 336 of the National Electrical Code. Plan the work thoroughly. Consult your local inspector for local regulations. I will now start by going over general requirements which apply to all the rough electrical work, regardless of the area installed. Let's do this. Generally, if securing more than two cables on one staple, be sure the staple is made for two or more cables. Most staples are not made for more than two cables, and in this case, using cable stackers is probably the best option. Verify that cables are secured within 12 inches of the outlet box and every four and a half feet thereafter. The term outlet is often used interchangeably with receptacle. Please note that by code definition, they are two distinct objects. This illustration shows an example of the two. Also verify that the cables are not stapled on edge and that the cables are secured without damage to the outer covering. Bends in non-metallic sheathed cable must be no less than five times the diameter of the cable. Board holds four electrical cables should be maintained no less than one and a quarter inches from the face of the framing members. However, where board holes are less than one and a quarter inch from the edge, protection from nail or screw penetration must be provided by a steel plate or bushing that is a minimum one sixteenth of an inch thick. Protection of cable also applies at notches in wood made to accommodate electrical cables. But when notching framing, be sure the structural integrity of the framing is not compromised as a result of the notching. Also verify that electrical cables installed parallel to joists, rafters, or studs are secured no less than one and a quarter inch from the face of the framing member. And for this inspection, all cables should be roughed in, made out, as in assuring that ground conductors are pigtailed in boxes and assure neutral conductors are pigtailed on all three wire home runs. All cable sheathing must extend at least a quarter inch into the box. Six inches of free conductor is required at each outlet box, measured from the point in the box where it comes out, and if the opening of the outlet box is less than eight inches in any dimension, the conductor must extend three inches outside the opening. Verify that all metal boxes are grounded. Boxes for sealing paddle fans must be marked by the manufacturer as suitable for sealing suspended fan support. So be sure to check the outlet box for the maximum weight that can be supported by the outlet. Well, it was a lot of fun presenting this information to you. This concludes part one of two. In part two, I will go over electrical requirements within the dwelling and the exterior of the dwelling. So stay tuned as we continue down this journey. And please remember that these are basic requirements. Nevertheless, we will continue to build from these basic fundamentals as questions arise and as codes change. Lastly, always check with your local building department for their local amendments to the code. Until next time, take care and stay awesome.